welcome to raw online uh, today's topic is uh, pop q and baden walker classification pop q stands for pelvic organ prolapse quantification system so the abstract of this presentation is that prolapse of one or several pelvic organ is a condition that has been known in medicine since its early days so different therapeutic approaches have been proposed and accepted and one of the main problems concerning the prolapse of pelvic organ is a need for universal clear and reliable staging method so prolapse has been known and recognized as a disease for more than 100 years so our different systems are proposed for the staging of prolapse however none of the systems from shaw's classification to pop q to baird and walker none of the systems have proved it itself to respond to all the requirements of the medical community so vast majority of systems of scoring prolapse were seen coming and going failing to become the single most useful system for staging in the pelvic organ prolapse so pop q is the latest addition to a group of staging systems for the pelvic organs and this has become increasingly popular among specialists all over the world though it is not very simple as a concept and pop q helps defining the features of prolapse at a level of completeness not reached by any other systems to date so in this vision the pop q system may reach the importance and recognition of the tnm system used in oncology and this lecture briefly will describe the pop q system in comparison with the other staging systems and we'll also analyze the main features of pop q and what is the concept behind the pop q the pelvic organ prolapse quantification system it refers to an objective site specific system for describing quantifying and staging the pelvic supports in a woman it provides a standardized tool for documenting comparing and communicating the clinical findings with proven inter observer and intra observer reliability the pop q system gained the attention of the specialists all over the world it is being approved by international continent society the american urogynecological society and the society for gynecological surgeons for the description of female pelvic organ prolapse now pop q system is the most commonly used system by gynecologists and urogynecologists although other systems have been devised nevertheless the use of pop q is not yet accepted worldwide in routine care and there is a another system that's called its rival that is the baden walker half way scoring system and this is the next most commonly used system so pelvic organ prolapse is a common and distressing condition and it occurs whenever there is a weakness in the supporting structures of pelvic floor allowing the pelvic viscera to descend and displace from its normal anatomical position while not usually life threatening prolapse is often associated with deterioration in quality of life and it may contribute to bladder bowel and sexual dysfunction so extended life expectancy and expanding elderly population means that prolapse is an increasingly prevalent condition because it is a problem of the fourth decade the fifth and sixth decade and so on in the postmenopausal age group so symptoms associated with prolapse are often difficult to correlate with anatomical site or severity of the bulge is often non specific women with prolapse typically complain of a sensation of lump or vaginal heaviness recurrent irritative bladder symptoms voiding difficulties incontinence and defecatory difficulties so other problems such as low back or pelvic pain may or may not be related to prolapse the need for a standardized reliable and clear staging method became more and more obvious in the last decades So urogenital prolapse was traditionally classified by the degree of anatomical deformity depending on the site of the defect and presumed pelvic viscera that was involved. So we used to call them what is anatomical def- deformity is it a cystocele is it a urethroceal is it a rectocele is it an endocele is it a deficient perineum but the large number of different grading systems that have been used is reflective of the difficulty in designing a on this objective and reproducible system of grading the prolapse and there was also the problems for intra observer and inter observer variability and this led to confusions and this make make it difficult to compare the successive examinations over time in the same woman or in between different women the traditional anatomical site prolapse classification or the shaw's classification there are some problems with classifying the prolapse as in uh, grade 1 as above the introitus grade 2 at the level of introitus grade 3 below the introitus and grade 4 is prosydentia when the fundus of the uterus lies outside the uterus 
Now this anatomical site prolapse classification, it told us that cystocele grade, rectocele grade, urethrocele grade, but then there was an unrealistic certainty regarding the structure on the other side of the vaginal bulge. And this was often a false assumption. We said that upper two-third is cystocele. But it could be upper two-third, could be something else also. So it was often a false assumption, particularly in women who have had previous prolapse surgeries. And the terms anterior vaginal wall prolapse and posterior vaginal wall prolapse and apical prolapse are therefore often preferred because of the uncertainty regarding the anatomical structures on the other side of the vaginal wall. So anterior vaginal wall prolapse is a better terminology than saying cystocele or urethrocele. Posterior vaginal wall prolapse is a better terminology rather than saying enterocele or rectocele because we are not very sure what that bulge is on the posterior vagina. Now coming to this anatomical classification, when we say anterior vaginal wall compartments, it includes the cystocele and urethrocele. Urethrocele is, real, is really un, uncommon, though it can happen. Cystoceles can be central or lateral cystoceles or it can be a combined lateral and a central cystocele. Now coming to the apical vaginal wall or the middle compartment, we can have enterocele which can be an anterior or posterior. We can have uterine descent. We can have utero-vaginal descent with cystocele, enterocele and rectocele coming down. We can have a just the vaginal vault aversion post hysterectomy patient with cystocele, enterocele and rectocele. When we say posterior vaginal wall or the posterior compartment, it can be a rectocele. Now rectocele can be a low rectocele, it can be a mid-vaginal rectocele or it can be a high rectocele. And then there can be perineal body defects. And this anatomical classification tells that enterocele can also be seen in the posterior compartment. So in the posterior compartment, we can also see enterocele in the posterior. And then there are perineal body defects as per this anatomical classification. Whenever we said urethrocele, we meant that it is a prolapse of the lower anterior vaginal wall involving the urethra only. When we said cystocele, it meant that the prolapse of the upper anterior vaginal wall involving the bladder. Generally, prolapse of the urethra is also associated and hence the term cystourethrocele was also often used. When we say uterovaginal prolapse is used to describe prolapse of uterus, cervix and upper vagina. When we say enterocele, it is a prolapse of upper posterior wall of vagina containing small loops of bowel. And rectocele is a prolapse of lower posterior part of vagina involving the rectum bulging forwards into the vagina.